introduction to spark preface content of this lecture in this lecture we will discuss the framework of spark resilient distributed data sets and also we will discuss the spark execution the need of spark apache spark is a big data analytics framework that was originally developed at university of california berkeley at amp labs in 2012 since then it has gained a lot of attraction both in the academia and in the industry it is an another system for big data analytics now before this spark the map reduce was already in use now why isn't the map reduce good enough that we are going to explore to understand the need of the spark system before that we have to understand that map reduce simplifies the batch processing on a large commodity clusters so in that process the data file or a data set which was the input which was input through the sdfs system uses uh, the map function to be splitted into across different splits and then the map function was applied onto this particular splits which in turn will generate the intermediate values which is in the form of shuffle and is stored in sdfs and then passed on to the reduce function giving the output so this is the scenario of a map reduce execution framework as you have seen the data set is now stored in the sdfs file system hence this particular computation is done for the batch processing system so we have seen that this particular batch processing was done using the map reduce system and that was in use earlier before the development of spark now let us see why this particular model of map reduce is not good enough to be there now as you have seen uh, in the previous slide that the output of the map function will be stored in sdfs and this will ensure the fault tolerance so the output of map function was stored into sdfs file system and this ensures the the fault tolerance so in between if there is a failure when it is stored in the sdfs file system still the data is not lost and is completely saved that is why it is ensuring the fault tolerance and because of that fault tolerance the intermediate values or intermediate results out of the map functions was stored into sdfs file now this particular intermediate results will be now further fed on to the reduce function so that was the typical map reduce execution pipeline now what is the issue the problem is mentioned over here that the major issue is the performance 
So, that means, the performance is degraded and it has become expensive to save to the disk for this particular activity of fault tolerance. Hence, this particular MapReduce framework becomes quite slow to some of the applications which are interactive and required to be processed in the real time. Hence, this particular framework is not very useful for certain applications. Therefore, let us summarize that MapReduce can be expensive for some applications and for example, interactive and iterative application, they are very expensive. And also, this particular framework that is the MapReduce framework lacks efficient data sharing across the map and reduce phase of operation or iterations. So, lacks efficient data sharing in the sense the data which is the intermediate form of map reduce is map is stored in the file system SDFS file system. Hence, it is not shared in an efficient manner. Hence, this particular sharing uh, the data across map and reduce phase has to be through the disk and which is a slow operation, not an efficient operation. Hence, this is statement which says that map reduce lacks the efficient data sharing into the system. So, due to these drawbacks, there were several specialized framework did evolved for different programming models such as. So, the Pregel system was uh, there for graph processing using bulk synchronous processing BSP and then there is another framework which is called iterative map reduce was also made and they allowed a different framework, some specialized framework for different applications to be supported. So, the drawback of MapReduce has given the way to several frameworks and they were involved a different programming models. So, bulk synchronous parallel, bulk synchronous parallel processing framework is about there is a synchronization barrier. So, the processes at different speed they joins at the synchronization barrier and then they will proceed further on. So, this is called BSP model. So, this BSP model also uh, allows uh, a fast processing for the typical graph application. So, graph processing is done using BSP uh, to make it more faster because the map reduce does not support the graph processing within it. So, graph processing framework requires that the data which is uh, being uh, taken up by the neighboring nodes, then basically these nodes, the neighboring node will collect the data, will gather the data and then perform the computation and then again scatter these data to the other points. So, this particular operation uh, the communication, computation and then communication is to be completed as one step that is the lock step and hence the bulk synchronous processing comes into the an effect where this all three operations all three actions are to be performed and then only the next step will takes place using bulk synchronous processing. Hence, this kind of paradigm that is called bulk synchronous processing framework is useful for the graph processing that we will see that how this particular different programming paradigm such as bulk synchronous processing and iterative map reduce for the iterative applications for example, the iterations of a map reduce uh, is basically you can see in the machine learning algorithms. So, these different frameworks were evolved out of this map reduce drawbacks and uh, they, they, they existed 
uh, over the several period over the period of time to fill up this particular gap. Now, uh, seeing all these scenarios and to provide the data sharing and to support the applications such as interactive and uh, iterative applications, there was a need for the Spark system. So, the solution which Spark has given is in the form of an abstract data type which is called resilient distributed data set. So, the Spark provides a new way of supporting the abstract data type which is called resilient distributed data set or in short it is RDDs. Now, we will see in this part of the discussion how these RDDs are going to solve the drawbacks of the batch processing map reduce into a more efficient data sharing and also going to be supporting the iterative and interactive applications. Now, this particular RDDs are resilient distributed data sets, they are immutable. Immutable means we cannot change. It cannot be changed, so that means once an RDD is formed, so it will be an immutable. Now, in this particular way, uh, this immutable resilient distributed data set can be partitioned in a various ways across different cluster nodes. So, partition collection of records, so partitioning can happen uh, in a for example, if this is a cluster of machines which are connected with each other. So, the RDDs can be partitioned and stored at different places at different segments. Hence, the immutable a uh, partition collection of records is possible and in this particular scenario that is called RDDs. Now, another thing is once an RDD is formed, then it will be formed using uh, it will be built RDDs will be built through a coarse gain transformations such as map, join and so on. Now, these RDDs can be cached for efficient reuse, so that we are going to see that lot of new uh, operations can be performed on it. So, again let us summarize that the Spark has given a solution in the form of an abstract data type which is called as a RDD and RDDs can be built using the transformations and also can be changed can be changed to another form that is RDD can become another RDD by making various transformations such as map, join and so on that we will see in due course of action. These RDDs are, are immutable partition collection of record. means that once an RDD is formed, so as an immutable, immutable means you cannot change this entire collection of records can be stored and in a, in a convenient manner onto the, onto the cluster system. Hence, this is an immutable partition collection of the record. These RDDs can be cached, can be cached in memory. for efficient reuse. So, as we have seen that MapReduce lacks this uh, uh, data sharing and now using the RDDs uh, a Spark will provide the efficient uh, sharing of data in the form of RDDs. Now, let us see uh, through an example of a word count, word count example 
to understand the need of a spark. So, in the word count application the data set is stored through the SDFS file system and is being read. So, after reading this particular data set from the file system, this particular reading operation will build the RDDs and which is shown here in this block number 1. So, that means once the data is read it will build the RDDs from the word count data set. Once these RDDs are built then they can be stored at different places. So, it is a immutable partition collections and now various operations we can perform. So, we know that these RDDs we can perform various transformations and first transformation which we are going to perform on these RDDs which are which is called a map function. Map function for the word count program is being applied on different RDDs which are stored. So, after applying the map function this particular output will be stored in memory and then again the reduce function will be applied on these RDDs which is the output or which is the transformations which is the transformed RDDs out of the map function again the reduce function will apply and the data and the result of this reduce will remain uh, in cache so that it can be uh, used up by different application. So, you can see that this particular transformation uh, which is changing the RDDs from one form to another form that means after reading from the file it will become an RDD and after the applying the map function it will change to another RDD and map function and after applying the reduce function it will change to another form and the final output will be remain in the cache memory. Output will remain in the cache so that whatever application requires this output can be used up. So, this particular pipeline which we have shown is quite easily understandable and is convenient to manage and party and to store in the partitioned collection manner in this cluster computing system. So, we have seen that this RDDs has simplified this particular task and has also made this operations efficient. Hence, RDDs is an immutable partition collection of the records and they are built through the coarse grained transformation that we have seen in the previous example. Now, another question is since the map reduce was storing the intermediate results of a map before it is being used in the reduce function into an SDFS file system for ensuring the fault tolerance. Now, since map reduce since the spark is not using uh, this intermediate results storage through the SDFS rather it will be in memory storage. So, there will be a how this spark ensures the fault tolerance that we have to understand now. The concept which spark uses for fault tolerance is called lineage. So, spark uses the lineage to achieve the fault tolerance and that we have to understand now. So, what spark does is it locks the coarse grained operations which are applied to the partition data set meaning to say that all the operation like reading of a file and that becomes an RDD and then making a, the transformation on an RDD using map function and then again another transformation of RDDs using reduce function, join function and so on. 
all these operations they form the course gained operations and they are to be logged into a file before applying it. So, if the data is so basically if the data is lost or if the uh, if the system crashes the node crashes they simply recompute these lost partition and whenever there is a failure. If there is no failure obviously no extra cost is required in this process. Let us see this through an example. So, again uh, let us explain that lineage is in the form of the coarse grained you say it is a log of a coarse grained operation. Now, this particular lineage will keep a record of all these operations coarse grained operations which are applied and that will be kept in a log file. Now, we will see how using this lineage or a log file the fault tolerance can be achieved. Let us see through this particular example that let us see that the word count example which we have seen in the last slide. Now, the, the same word count example we have to we have we have to see that these RDDs will keep track of RDDs will keep track the graph of transformation that build them their lineage to rebuild the lost data. So, the so, there will be a log of all the coarse grained operation which are performed and which has uh, built this RDDs transformations and this is called lineage. Let us see what happens is for example, after reading this particular RDDs will be formed after the read operations on the data set and then on this particular data this RDD we have performed the map operation. RDD transformed RDDs and this transformed RDD again is now applied with the reduce function to make this particular RDD and is stored in the cache. Now, consider that if this particular node which has stored this transformed RDD if it is failed obviously, it has to trace back to the previous RDD and consult this lineage which will tell that this is an output of the map function, this is an RDD transformed an RDD. This RDD when we apply the reduce function it will recreate the same RDD which is lost. So, let us see what is written what we have just seen. So, we have to simply recompute the lost partition whenever there will be a failure how we have to trace back and apply the same. Uh, uh, transformation again on RDD and we can recompute that uh, the, the, the RDD which is lost in the partition uh, due to the failures. So, now using lineage concept we have seen that the fault tolerance is achieved uh, in a spark system. Now, we will see that what more we can do here in the spark. So, RDDs transformation RDDs provide various operations and all these operations are divided into two different categories. The first category is called transformations which, which we can apply as an RDD operation, second is called actions which we can perform using RDD operations. So, as far as the transformations which RDD supports is in the form of um, uh, filter, join, map, group by all these are different transformations which RDD supports in the spark system. Now, another set of uh, operation which RDD supports is called actions. So, actions in the sense the output of some, some uh, operations is whenever there then it is called action for example, count, print and so on. Now, then another thing which spark can provide is called control operations to the programmer level. So, there are two interesting control which is being provided by the spark to the programmers. The first is called partitioning. So, the spark gives the control over how you can partition your RDDs across uh, different cluster systems. And second one is called 
the persistence, persistence allows you to choose whether you want to persist RDDs onto the disk or not. So, by default it is not persisted, but if you allow, if you choose this persistent RDDs then the RDDs have to be stored in SDFS. Hence, the persistent and partitioning both controls are given to the to the programmer to the user in by, by the Spark system. There are various other Spark applications where Spark can be used first. These applications are such as Twitter spam classification, EM algorithm for traffic prediction, K means clustering algorithms, alternating least square matrix factorization in memory OLAP aggregation on his on Hive data and SQL on Spark. These are some of the applications and these are the reference material for further studies on the Spark system that we have uh, that is available on https spark.apache.org. Now we will see about the Spark execution. So, Spark execution is done in the form of distributed programming that is the first operation is called broadcast. So, there is a there are three different entities, one is called the driver entity of the spark, the other entity is called executors which are there on different nodes, data nodes and then there is, is, a, is a shuffle operation. So, let us see the first operation is called broadcast. So, the driver will broadcast these different commands to the different executors that is called a broadcast operation. will broadcast to the executors. Now, these executors will execute and give the result back to the driver and then again the driver will give further operations or the functions and these particular functions are used by the shuffle and again given back to the executors. This all will be performed the entire task operations will be performed using the directed acyclic graph. So, directed acyclic graph is the scheduler for the spark execution. So, spark execution uh, as we have seen that RDDs can be uh, executed using two operations, one is called transformations, the other one is called actions. So, in this particular RDD we have shown you the actions in the form of the dotted circle and transformation in the form of a gray circle. So, you can see here that this shows that this is an RDD and from this, this particular RDD is obtained using the transformations and further this particular RDD is now giving performing the action part and this is also a transformation, transformation, transformation and these are the actions. So, these actions will give the output or the results of the execution. This complete schedule is available at the driver and using this particular scheduler the driver in turn will supply the different actions, different operations on RDDs in the form of transformations and actions as it is defined in the directed acyclic graph scheduler. Therefore, this directed acyclic graph or a DAG will take either the actions or transformations. So, actions include the count, take for each 
and the transformation involves the map reduced by key, joined by key and group by key. So, these are all uh, uh, diagram I have already explained that these are all uh, uh, RDDs and uh, these are all transformations. The arrows are transformations from one uh, RDDs to another RDDs and if this is an action on these RDDs, it will be performed on the action. So, let us see. Uh, a simple word count application uh, which is written in uh, is Spark using Flume Java. So, here we can see that we have to set a master which will uh, which will take care of uh, running the entire DAG scheduler and now then we have to create a Spark context and we have to read the text file and then we have to do a flat map which will split different words which are separated by the blank. After that flat map then we have to uh, do the map operation of a word count which will emit the word with and the value 1. Then we will perform the reduce by key that means for, uh, for, for a particular word all such list of numbers or instances which is emitted by the map function will be now doing the summation of that. And then the word count it will now take and then it will uh, print it for each value of uh, key the, uh, the, the word count will be printed. So, this uh, way uh, uh, this DAG uh, automatically once the program is made the DAG will be constructed automatically and the DAG will be given to the master node and the master in, in turn will communicate uh, with the executors and shuffle for this execution in this uh, way that is performed in this DAG way. Let us see the Spark implementation in more details. So, Spark Ideas is an expressive computing system which is not limited by the MapReduce model that means beyond MapReduce also the programming can be now done in the Spark. Now, this Spark will facilitate the system memory and it will avoid saving the intermediate results to the disk. It will cache for repeated repetitive queries that means, the, the output of uh, the transform actions or the transformation will remain in the cache. So, that iterative applications can, can make use of this fast or efficient data sharing. Spark is also compatible with, with the Hadoop system. RDDs is an abstraction as I told you, it is a resilient distributed data set, it is a partition collection of record. They are spreaded across the cluster, they are read only and caching data sets in the uh, possible in memory and different storage levels are possible. As I told you that uh, the transformations and actions, there are two operations RDD supports and transformations include map, filter, join, they are lazy operations and actions include the count, collect, save and they are trigger executions. Spark components, let us go and discuss the Spark components in more details. So, uh, as you know that Spark is a distributed computing framework. So, now we will see here what are the different components which together will form the computational environment of the uh, Spark execution. Now, we have seen the there is a cluster manager, there is a driver program, there is a worker nodes and within the worker nodes we have the executors and within the executors what are the different tasks and 
what is the cache. All these different components together will form the distributed computing framework which will give an efficient execution environment for the Spark program or Spark applications. So, here, uh, so within a driver program when whenever uh, a Spark shell is being prompt that will be inside the driver program will create the Spark context. Now, executing the Spark context means that it will communicate with the worker nodes within the worker nodes the executors. So, Spark context will create will interact or communicate with the executors and within the executors the tasks will be executed. So, executors within the executor various tasks will be executed and executors will be computed or will be executing on the worker nodes. So, the driver program then interacts with the cluster manager and cluster manager in turn will interact with these worker nodes. So, this all will happen inside the spark and spark will dust the cluster manager. Now, there is an option in the spark that instead of going through the cluster manager you can also use the yarn and other such resource manager and scheduler. Now, uh, let us see uh, what do you mean by the driver program, spark context, server and cluster manager, worker node, executor, uh, then task and uh, through this. To understand this, let us see uh, a simple application. Now, we have seen here the driver program and this driver program will create a spark context. It will create a spark context SC and this in turn will now communicate with the executors which are running inside which are running inside. So, so this particular driver program uh, in turn knows uh, the the different worker program communication and the spark context will now communicate to the executors. And these executors in turn will communicate or will, will execute the tasks. So, these tasks are nothing but the various transformations, the RDDs through the DAG they are being transformed and they are done through the tasks. So, different executors various tasks are being created and executing. So, this will create the job execution and let us go back and, and see that these. So, this particular way the driver program uh, will uh, execute uh, the DAG and uh, server spark context SC will be created which in turn will communicate inside the worker node with the executors and these executors in turn will execute various uh, transformations and actions and the result will be remain in the cache. So, that was about the spark components. So, we have seen that uh, uh, in this manner the uh, operations of spark is being performed. Now, another view of uh, partition level view, we can see here that the partitioning, so that means RDDs are partitioned and different tasks are being executed. Similarly, job scheduling, that means once an RDD uh, is, uh, uh, that means operations are given, automatically it will build the DAG and DAG will be given to the DAG scheduler and the DAG scheduler will split the graph into the stages of uh, task and submit each stage as it is ready. So, task set is created and given to the task scheduler and as far as the cluster manager is concerned, it launches the tasks via the cluster manager and retry the field or straggling task. And this task is given to the worker that we have seen in the previous slide and this particular workers will create the thread and execute them there. 
there are different APIs which are available and you can write these APIs using Java program, Scala or a Python. There is also an interactive interpreter uh, available access through the Scala and Python. Standby applications are, there are many applications and performance if, if we see that Java and Scala are faster and thanks to the static typing. Now let us see uh, the hands on session uh, how we can perform using uh, Spark. So, Spark uh, we can run as uh, Scala, so Spark shell will be created and we can download uh, the, the, the file, the data set file and um, then uh, it can be uh, built using uh, the package and then this particular task or a data file can be submitted to the, uh, to the master node of that is Spark system. So, uh, so directly Spark uh, can store it into the system and now it can perform various uh, operations on this particular data set using a Scala program. Now, summary the concept of, uh, of MapReduce uh, uh, limited to the single pass MapReduce is basically limiting various other applications and this particular concept is avoiding uh, the sorting intermediate results, storing intermediate results on the disk or on HDFS and also speed up computations are required when reusing the data sets and all these features are available as part of the spark that we have seen using RDDs. So, using RDDs now spark provides the not only map reduce operations beyond map reduce it can also use second thing is it can be in memory operations not necessarily to be stored in sdfs in uh, to store the intermediate results so this way of in memory computations will make the speed up and brings about the efficiency for data sharing across different iterations. So, iterative and interactive applications both are easily supported and MapReduce and non-MapReduce applications are also supported by the Spark system. So, all this is possible with the help of RDDs and their operations. So, we have seen uh, that now the RDDs are, sorry, Spark is very much required and uh, all the drawbacks of MapReduce uh, and Hadoop is now not there with the Spark and therefore, Spark now has now various new applications. For example, the Spark system uh, will uh, have so, the Spark as a core, as a core can be used for building different applications such as Spark MLlib that is the machine learning over the Spark, then Spark streaming that is the real time applications over the Spark and Spark GraphX, the graph computation over the Spark. So, now uh, Spark can use HDF, uh, uh, HDFS or may not use HDFS, Spark is independent. Therefore, let us conclude uh, this discussion that RDDs resilient distributed data sets will provide a simple and efficient programming model uh, for different supporting various applications which are uh, the batch and interactive and iterative 
applications all are supported using this concept which is called RDDs. Now, this is a generalized to a broad set of applications and it will leverage the coarse grained uh, nature of parallel algorithm for fault recovery. So, that is why this is 100 times faster compared to the traditional MapReduce. So, Spark is 100 times faster that is what is compared with the performance by the um, Spark uh, um, production clusters. Thank you.